Watch how fast I can drink this root beer. Hello, something's wrong. I am concerned that your relationship has become codependent. We have other friends. Yeah. Emil? Emil! Ouch. That was hard to watch. <laughs> okay, Davey and Gen Z are best friends who feel like they don't fit in at their high school, Schrodinger, or Schrodinger High School, but accidentally discover a portal into a multiverse in their very own shared locker. Uh, this is a creative show. This is fun, quirky. So we welcome the stars of Davey and Jonesy's Locker, the stars Veronica Slowiskowska and, uh, uh, yeah, Jalen. <laughs> Sorry, I'm the, the name's different in there. Uh, Jalen, let me get your name right here. Jalen Thora Brooks. I'm That's so right. sorry. We didn't we got it. it. It says Erica Sways. She's not in the show, is she? Oh, she's, she's in the she's show. show. She's in the show. Shout okay, out. okay. Shout I'm so sorry for that. That makes sense. Jalen Thora. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you play Davy, you play Jonesy. Yes. yes. This is like kind of described as a freaks and geeks meets stranger things show. Ooh. Uh, I was very intrigued because even though I haven't been in high school in a long time, it brought back a lot of memories and it's just done in such a creative way. Uh Davy, what was it like working with like an all Toronto cast and you know having this kind of premise for a multiverse be your catapult for like different scenarios in the yeah, show. Yeah honestly okay well first off I think some of the funniest and most talented people live in Canada mm -hmm. and are from Canada and I think it's because we um are cold all the time so <laughs> we just we we're like not bored but but our brains kind of go in, in crazy yeah. places so Ebony who is the the creator of the show I was like a fan of mm -hmm. in when I was in high school and she was uh, part of this comedy troupe called Picnic Face mm -hmm. and I would watch it in my parents like computer room on YouTube yeah. and then now like having her brain come to life and then adding our own little like colors uh, through like acting and improv and stuff it was like Truly the most fun mm -hmm. ever. It was like so summer camp, fun. yeah. Yeah, I know, awesome. it looks like a lot of fun. And uh, Jalen, you played Jonesy, you guys yes. are best friends, and something separates you, or the principal, played by, you know, the Ebony. creator. Yeah. 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 She's hilarious in the she's show. Incredible. She's like, hey, you guys need to kind of split up, otherwise, you know, you know, we can't have you together. So that mm -hmm. kind of threatens everything. But there's a school dance, and there's a moment kind of like very Carrie-esque, but more <laughs> yes, PG. Yes. No, PG that's a Carrie is a great way it, yeah. 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 to describe that. Uh, what was it like for you on the show and getting to work with, you know, Veronica? Like, did you guys hit it off right away? How did the chemistry kind of... We're like, mm. <laughs> we're like yeah, it was awesome. Actually, you seem like you're good friends. You seem no, like you we actually were enjoy each other. so lucky. We were yeah. so lucky that we got along right away because you were in L.A at the time so mm -hmm. we literally she came out just for the show we met like a few days before filming yeah. but we're doing these like you know 16 hour days together and we are together the right. whole, time. whole time we're the only two people on set every single day all day and yeah. just like one of us was always having a mental breakdown <laughs> yes. and then we the other one was like a support out. system yeah. and we go back and forth depending on the day yeah. Yeah. So. and we're from the same Small city. town yeah. or city small town small town the city same, is a compliment the same <laughs> northern <laughs> Uh, suburb. Northern yes. GTA. What what place is that? Barry. Barry <laughs> Shout out Barry. Without Barry. Without yeah. Barry. Hey, they've got a killer milestones at Indigo now. There we go. Like, I don't know. know if that was there when you guys were there, but Thank Barry you. is great, even though it was voted uh, most depressing city. Oh, recently. no, it wasn't. It was. Oh, it was. No. We did a story on it on the yeah. show, but back yeah, to your well, show. Yes, that's it's why so we have such twisted, twisted minds. I was going to say, that's why you're yeah. a comedian. Yeah. 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 It, it's so creative because there's like just these scenes where it almost feels like anime, where it's like, Bleh! yeah, you know, like you going crazy for the guy and it zooms in and then there's blood splatter. I won't give too much away. <laughs> uh, but when you guys travel through, you know, the multiverse into the different dimensions, it, do you feel like, let's say, if you could have an alternate character in real life, who do you think you would be, Jalen? Oh, my because goodness. Because all the characters change, but they're your friends on the show in your high school. Is this who I could pick out of them to be? Or my yes, own? or your own version. Oh like, my let's goodness. say if Daisy and Jonesy had to pick their own multiverse I would character. love to go to, like, a superhero world where everyone has, like, their own power. I love when TV shows do a spinoff. Like, you know what I mean? They'll do a fun yeah. episode where everyone gets a superpower. I would yeah. love to see, like, what everyone gets based on their personality, I think would be yeah. hilarious. Mm -hmm. That's, That's my universe. And what about you, I Veronica? I mean, you play so many characters, you know, in real life, on your on your TikTok. Yeah. I think I... We were talking about this the other day. I just want, like, 
genie from Aladdin, like the mm, animated yes. version, just to be with me, like Robin yes. Williams, like granting me wishes. Like, <laughs> I don't even know what universe that is, but I just thought it would be awesome. Davy and Jonesy and Robin Williams. And Robin Williams. That's yes. the spin off. Yes. Okay, well, I hope everyone checks it out. Ten episodes will be available, but Davy and Jonesy's Locker drops on Prime Video Canada, March 22nd. Veronica Slawakowska and Jalen Thora Brooks. So sorry we messed that up in the beginning, no, but no. yeah, this show is a hit and so glad to meet both of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. Thank you. For having us. All right, check it out. Okay, well, wrestler Adam Copeland has achieved almost everything there is to do in the squared circle and he's putting his career on the line tomorrow as All Elite Wrestling lands at the Coca Coliseum for a major show. And joining us live now on the couch is rated R superstar Adam Copeland himself, uh, the wrestler, the man. Thank you so much for joining us. It is so surreal having you here because we grew up on WWE yeah. wrestling and you, you know, three generations there. Yeah. You fought with almost everyone. So tomorrow you're coming back to Toronto, yep. uh, you know, uh, and you're going to take on your old, former best friend, yep. Christian Cage, in something called the I Quit match, which sounds kind of uh, uh, nefarious. <laughs> it, it gets a little nefarious. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Right. Um, it, uh, yeah, I'm wrestling Christian Cage tomorrow. We met each other in the sixth grade up in Orangeville oh yeah. and uh, maintained that friendship through the years. Both somehow ended up doing the one thing we wanted to do mm -hmm. from the same small town in southern Ontario and and uh, and we did almost as much as you can do which is when I say it out loud or if I explain it to people they're like you, you understand that's a movie and I'm like well I don't know <laughs> yeah. about that but it, it, it's been pretty cool. I mean the odds against that are pretty remarkable right considering like you made it to the literal big time in terms of wrestling that kind of thing so when you look back at your career you know you're 50 years old now Adam like did you still think that when you were 12 years old in grade six thinking about that you'd still be wrestling at 50? Mm -hmm. I mean that's pretty remarkable your body's taken a beating. Yeah, you know, it definitely has mm -hmm. and at 12 if you had told me I'd be doing anything at 50 I right. think you're insane because that was like are, are you kidding 50 yeah who does mm -hmm. anything at 50 no meanwhile yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I I, uh, I didn't assume I'd still be wrestling at 50 but I was forced to retire for nine years mm -hmm. so oh. um, I have a triple fusion in my neck and oh my but it, by falling into acting you know, almost accidentally uh, and doing my own stunt scenes and fight scenes that really kind of triggered the idea and, and the light bulb went off like wait I'm doing this here can I do it back there, right. and, and then that's the first love. Yeah. So, um, so I just put the work in, got got to work, and after nine years, I, I got it all back. Yeah, that's remarkable. Thanks for sharing that. I, I know you play uh, the god Ares in Percy Jackson and yes. the Olympians, a great show. Uh, and I know that you also, you know, <laughs> laid down on a bed of thumbtacks. So that was very interesting to see back in the day. But I'm curious because, you know, in, in your high school yearbook, you earned the caption. Uh, what was it? It most likely to win the WWE championship yeah. belt. So I'm very curious, like, what did you do to earn that caption in your yearbook in high uh, school? I was that kid, uh -huh. right? I, I was the wrestling kid. You know, yeah. there's always that kid, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's the, the goth kid. There's uh -huh. the, the wrestling kid. There, I was the wrestling kid. And everyone knew it. Everyone knew that was my career goal was to do wow. this. Uh, it's all I ever said I was going to do. That's where the complete target and aim was focused on. So um, when I was 17 and still saying it, uh, people I think, listened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people listened. You know? So you get to live out your dream. You sort of created your own, fulfilled your own destiny, as it were, Adam. But let's talk about this I Quit match tomorrow night, because yeah. you know a lot of fans may be watching this morning saying, "Well, what's the deal with an I Quit <laughs> yeah. match? And how do you prepare for a match like this?" Uh, there's no prep. <laughs> you, you, you just, no, no, you just have Does to throw every battle? thought outside of your brain that tells you you shouldn't do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's got to get gone. Um, I, I Quit matches are interesting because the whole idea is you make your opponent. Quit. say the words I quit mm. um, which means you're gonna see probably ladders and you'll see some tables and you'll see some some <sighs> interesting uh, utensils we'll use and, and, and things like that but it you know, from a storytelling perspective, and when I say storytelling, mm -hmm. it can throw people off, but it's what we are. We're yeah. just our own stunt people as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
and uh, it's always fun with these matches because my my final destination brain starts to come up with ideas, and I kind of feel like Dr. Frankenstein once I get going. So right. uh, tomorrow's going to be interesting. Wow, it must be exhilarating. Uh, and I know that you have uh, two daughters. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Have they ever seen you in the ring? They have. Uh -huh. uh, we explained everything. Okay. We're like, okay, <laughs> you know, dad jumps around in spandex, <laughs> and it's all entertainment. Yeah. But we get hurt. Uh, it, they they enjoy it for the the theater of the absurd that it mm -hmm. is, but they also see that there's a toll because they see me try to get out of yeah. bed in the morning. Yeah, no oh, wow. um, yeah. So there there's both mm -hmm. aspects. But yeah. when they see me on Percy Jackson, they're over the moon. Yeah. It's like, and you didn't get hurt doing that. She's <laughs> right, right. So, um, but they 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 watch it all. Uh, they didn't for a long time, but mm -hmm. we finally broke it down for them. We felt like they were of an age mm -hmm. to be able to kind of understand what it is that we're doing. We're inhabiting characters. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, the Rated R Superstar takes the stage uh, to, or takes the, to, to the ring tomorrow at the Coliseum. Uh, check it out. There's nothing quite like live wrestling. I've seen mm -hmm. it a few times. It is a sight to be seen. <laughs> Good luck in your I Quit match. Thank and hopefully you, you yeah. don't have those two words. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. right? Talk to CB24 Breakfast anytime, Adam. Thanks. Good to see yeah. you. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks so much, yeah. Adam. Nice Hope you win. Yeah, <laughs>
And uh, I played two songs for them, and they loved it, and they're all singing along. That's amazing. Is this your career now? Is this what you're going to be doing? Is this the plan? Well, we'll see, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's give everyone a chance, because this is the first time, Lucas, you've ever performed uh, live on television. You can perform one of Zach Bryan's songs right now. So listen, take it away, uh, play us out here, and uh, good luck in the future, Lucas. It's been great to meet you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Let's listen in here. Sitting there on rain night in a well-used chair Telling me how well he used to dance The western wind will come again And make you feel like you did When all those cowboys didn't stand a chance He said this life took most of you And they gave you ties and the day was through You said it all turned out awfully fair So tell the tales of all the times And all the seasons you got by Breathing in that cold November no one was there No one was there No one was there Amazing, Lucas, congratulations. I can see big things Thank ahead you for you. Much. That was fantastic. Oh, Roadhouse, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor, is a reimagination of the original 1989 film starring Patrick Swayze. Uh, but it's changing the backdrop to the world of UFC fighting, and it takes place in the Florida Keys. And it's set to stream today on Prime Video. So here's my conversation with Jake Gyllenhaal and his love interest in the film, Daniela Melchor. To the delight of, I'm sure, many fans who will watch this film, you do take off your shirt a lot. Um, in <laughs> fact, that's all you had to do to win a fight against uh, Carter, played by Post Malone, <laughs> in the opening scene. Uh, so kudos to you and your trainer, because you look like a real UFC fighter, like you are ripped. So talk about what it entailed to physically prepare for this role. I mean, I, I like to stay in shape, you know, I'm pretty athletic. So I, I like to stay at a base level where I can be, you know, ape like, my friends and I always go on trips. We do fun stuff. So, like, I, I want to be able to, like, be strong and use my body, you know? But to do this, I I really had to enlist, like, a great team. You know, I have, like, incredible trainer in Jason Walsh, and I had a amazing chef, uh, Paulette Tejada, who was making sure I had all of the, like, macros and all of the right calories I was eating. And... Um, mm. And then I had like an incredible PT and like just a lot of people all together working to make sure that I could kind of function like an athlete, you know, because there was the aesthetic part, but then also there was the actual fighting with different people and particularly with Conor McGregor, where we had to do tons and tons of takes. So you have to keep your energy up and stay away from injury and keep flexibility and mobility. And, you know, I'm... You know, I'm in my 40s, so, like, you know, it's different at a different time. I've gotten in shape on other movies, but, you know, this time I wanted to stay away from injury. I wanted to make sure that I could, like, not sustain injuries for the rest of my life from something like this, you know? So we all worked really hard. I, I can't say that I did it alone. I did not. I, it was just okay. a group of people, like, around me all the time, like, <laughs> eat this, do this, run there, you know, run faster, you know, so. Okay, it's good to know that it wasn't just your sole willpower to get you to look superhuman. Uh, I took some comforting. willpower. I, I wasn't just like oh, sitting wow. there, they weren't like, you know, but, it, but yeah. it was really, I mean, I think it's really important for people to know and understand that like this kind of process, there are these teams, you know, you look at athletes mm -hmm. and you watch professional athletes and they have, big teams around them making sure that they're in like peak condition and ready to perform and do all that and we tried to kind of mimic that for this film mm -hmm. yeah it really shows uh daniella let's turn to you you play ellie and you know you're the love interest of dalton played by jake in this film and on your instagram under the photo your caption it says you know don't mess with ellie uh you're a woman who speaks her mind and you get kind of pissed at dalton's character for beating up a bunch of guys and sending them to your er uh what was it like reimagining i guess the love interest that was 
was originally played by Kelly Lynch in the 1989 film. Uh, maybe you can, you know, spill the beans on whether um, Jake is a better kisser or fighter. Ah, uh, <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> First, <laughs> so we <laughs> shot that scene, that kiss scene, uh, that like the, it's the most romantic and the most intense between us uh, on on the whole story. And basically, we spent a full day, no, two full days, shooting that in the middle of the ocean. And I wish I could remember how it was, <laughs> but my mind was just focused on the fact that I needed to pee, but I couldn't <laughs> in the middle of the ocean because there's people that uh, get out of swimming pools whenever they need to pee, you know? And I'm one right. of those people. <laughs> I go to the restroom, and th there I couldn't. So, yeah. Yeah, but I, for sure, it was amazing. Uh, <laughs> this is so bad to say. It's actually really true. Like, first, so I, I, there'd be like throughout the day, I'd be like, "You can do it. Yeah, you can do it. Go pee," you know. And she'd and be he like, "He was making fun okay, of me okay. because he was like, yeah, you know? I can do it. I've been doing it.'" <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually, it's psychologically really hard. I've done like a triathlon where I really needed to pee. And the thing is, you oh, got to wow. do it in the lake, but you can't. You just feel morally bad about it. Uh, Jake, I know we're running out of time. You're a triathlete. One That's more. so cool. Uh, yeah, sorry. One, uh, sorry. one more question well, for you, Sorry, we're out of time. Jennifer, we're out of time. Oh, I'm so, so, I'm so sorry. sorry. That's, That's too bad. bad. Okay, well, I think that was fun. Jake, Daniela, so nice to meet you. Congrats Thanks. on the film. And hope our paths cross again. Pee in the water. Take care. <laughs>could listen to this all morning while well, he celebrated for modernizing the essence of american roots music the five-time grammy nominated guitarist kenny wayne shepherd and his band performing at massey hall tomorrow night but before that kenny wayne shepherd joins us live in studio here on cb24 breakfast kenny wayne it's great to meet you this morning uh good to have you here uh, i got introduced to your music just this week but I, i've fallen in love with it right away this mix of blues rock and folk or, or roots pardon me uh it's just so captivating here what's your inspiration like because i hear a lot of inst you know melodic instrument but where do you get it from where do you so, your inspiration yeah i grew up listening my dad was in radio my mm -hmm. dad was a disc jockey and a program director so i grew up around radio stations and music 24 7 and we went to every concert that came through town so i saw all different genres you right. know from blues to rock to country to r&b funk all that stuff so but i really latched on when i started playing guitar at a very young age i kind of latched on to blues music mm -hmm. so that's kind of the foundation of everything that i do and then we pull from all those other genres you know, and mix it all up to create, you know, something that we think is really, you know, founded in American culture, mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, features uh, the guitar very heavily and is really interesting. Yeah, I've really immersed myself in your music this week, and I have to say, what one thing I notice about your music is you write with a lot of different people, mm -hmm. a lot of different collaborations and a lot of different writing partners. How do you sort of go about that? Because, you know, you think of like Lennon McCartney or Simon and Garfunkel, just two people. You really like the variety, it seems. I do, because I feel like, you know, when I write with other people, it all always inevitably inspires something in me that wouldn't have happened otherwise. And also, you know, I have several people that I've been writing with for decades and it works really well, but recently I decided I wanted to get out of the comfort zone because that's where the real growth is and start working with some some new people because sometimes that's uncomfortable, but it's a, a means for, you know, growth. Yeah, and we were talking in the commercial break. You haven't played Massey Hall just yet, but you have played Toronto before. Uh, what can fans expect tomorrow night if they don't already have tickets? And, you know, what, what, what's on the agenda for your show? Well, you know, it's we like to refer to it as blues-infused rock and roll or contemporary blues music, however you want to put it. But it's really guitar-centric music. It's a high-energy show. And we have a catalog that spans over 30 years mm -hmm. now. We had a lot of radio success. We had a huge hit song with Blue on Black, but also many other songs that charted on radio in the states and sold millions of records so there's a lot of songs that people have kind of grown up listening to with our music as well so we're playing new stuff from the new album dirt on my diamonds volume one and we're playing songs from our 30 year long catalog yeah you've got it you've got a really excellent catalog no doubt about that i've got to ask you though your tour bus is in the parking lot here your life on the road you've got six kids at home you were telling me what's that like as a sort of like you know a dad but also a, a rock and blues star to be touring around like this well it's interesting you know the the ultimate goal is balance 
balance because I have a co I have a commitment to my fans, but mm -hmm. I certainly have a commitment to my family as well. So just ensuring that neither one of those is neglected is the goal. And so we've kind of figured out that about four weeks, five weeks on the road is the maximum before, mm -hmm. you know, we have to go back home and certainly reconnect. But sometimes the family comes out with me and, uh, you know, whenever they can, but their school schedule makes it a little complicated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose it does. Uh, I've got to ask you too, you know, volume one of Dirt on My Diamonds uh, came out two years ago, but there was kind of like a three or four year gap between that and your album before that. Mm -hmm. Was that was that the pandemic? What was, or were you just sort of like refreshing yourself? How would you describe that? Well, actually, I think you meant to say two months ago. Sorry, two months. Yeah, I did mean to fine. say two months ago. And, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, Dirt on My Diamonds came out two months ago. There <laughs> yeah. was a little bit of a gap. The pandemic, we started uh, writing for this record, uh, this double album thing that we're doing uh, during, right before the pandemic. And then obviously everything was put on hold for the mm -hmm. better part of two years. Yeah. And then we got back in the studio, finished it up. So we put volume number one out uh, just in November. And then volume number two is slotted to come out this September. Right. Months and years kind of mashed together as we come out of the pandemic. Indeed. Sure. Listen, Kenny Wayne Shepard, have a great show at Massey Hall Saturday night. It's been great to meet you and great to listen to your music. Thank Appreciate you. this. Thank you very much.